In this video, we're going to look at um, how we can relate cell potential to the equilibrium constant for a reaction. Um, and this is a good time also to point out that we have several equations from chapter 18 that we can start to bring in here. So um, we know from chapter 19 that delta G is equal to minus NFE. So this allows us to go from the cell potential to delta G. But we have two equations from chapter uh, 18 that we can also deal with. Um, now that we can get a relationship between delta G and E, we have delta G is equal to minus RT ln K. So this allows us to go between delta G and the, the K. And we also have that delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So what we're going to focus on in this video is uh, how we can relate E to K. But I wanted to point out, and I think this is important, if you know delta H and delta S, these can also give you um, E. So we can also say that minus NFE is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So don't forget that because if we were to give you thermodynamic data like delta H and delta S, you could calculate the cell potential knowing this relationship. But let's focus on these two for right now um, because this is kind of more common. So if we make NFE equal to minus RT ln K, um, we can reorganize this a little bit by bringing the minus NF down to the other side. And what we get is we get E is equal to min uh, E is equal to now plus because the minus cancels with the minus RT over NF ln of K. Now we can simplify this expression a little bit um, if we want to. So this is the general expression that would work um, at standard conditions, right? So if Th this would work if basically T is at 25 degrees Celsius. So uh, this form of the equation requires T equal to 25 degrees Celsius. We can also write another form of this equation where we have E not with a naught, meaning not a standard E, over RT with RT over NF ln of K. And basically this form of the equation would be at any temperature other than 25 degrees Celsius. So I wanted to point that out. You can get a cell potential at other temperatures. It's just that for it to be an E naught, it has to be a 25 degrees Celsius. So if we look at this one, if we plug in, since this one has to be standard, if we plug in T is equal to 25 degrees Celsius, um, which is equal to 298 Kelvin, uh, we plug in the value for Faraday's constant, which is 96,485 coulombs per mole. And we plug in R, which is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And we convert the natural log to a log base 10. Um, the reason for that will become more apparent when we look at the Nernst equation. Uh, the reason why we like to use log base 10 is because then we can rationalize um, changes in cell potential as a function of decades in concentration, meaning if I go from a concentration of 0.1 molar to 1 molar or a factor of 10, then that log has a single unit of 1, just like we would have in pH. So uh, that's why log base 10 is kind of helpful here, because we can rationalize changes in concentration um, similar to the pH scale. So if I plug all those values in um, to the equation, we get an, uh, an equation that has a single constant uh, which is E naught is equal to 0 0.0592 over N times the log base 10 of K. So that's a, what we would call a simplified version. And the requirement, though, for this one is you have to remember to use this. This has to be at 25 degrees Celsius. Um, if it's not at 25 degrees Celsius, then we have to use uh, this equation which is um, the one that's not at 25 degrees Celsius, because then it's not going to be a standard cell potential. So we're going to take a quick look at a practice question, um, which is lecture problem 9. In lecture problem 9, it asks you to calculate the equilibrium constant K for the following reaction from standard cell potentials at 25 degrees Celsius. So what we've got here is we've got a reaction between iron and tin 4 plus, giving us iron 2 plus and tin 2 plus. So um, we know that our equation is E is equal to, or E naught is equal to 0 0.0592 over N uh, times the log of K. So we need to get two things 
in order to get K. We need to get the E cell, which we are going to get from the half reactions, and we need to get N, which is the number of electrons transferred. So let's start dissecting that. So if we, for the anode and the cathode for this, um, the anode in this case is going to be the iron. So iron is going from iron to iron 2 plus, and that's going to give us two electrons. And the tin in this case is being reduced from tin 4 plus to tin 2 plus. Um, so that must be gaining two electrons. So let me just put those two electrons down there. So if you look up the standard cell potential for this, this the half cell, the standard reduction potentials for those half cells, you get, oops, you get 0 0.15 volts minus a negative uh, 0 0.15. Uh, for one volts and this gives you an E cell of 0 0.56 volts so that's sort of the first step um, because we need E cell to calculate K the other thing we're going to recognize is that N for this one is going to equal 2 because we have two electrons transferred in that process so now we can plug in and we can solve for um, K so we can say that well 0 0.56 volts is going to equal 0 0.0592 divided by 2 times the log of k. So if you solve for um, k in this case, you're going to get k is equal to 8.3 8 .8 times 10 to the 18th um, for k. So uh, what's important to understand is, uh, and I just want to kind of recap, we remember back when we said, well, if the E cell has a positive sign, which it does, then delta G is going to be negative because we have minus NFE. And we said that K was going to be much greater than uh, 1. And that's what we see here. This K is very large, and it's um, meaning that this is going to favor the products. So you can see how the positive cell potential of 0.56 volts is going to give us something that is very favorable in terms of going to products. So it's going to, that equilibrium mixture is going to favor products quite a bit. Um, so I just wanted to point that out because that proves some of the links that we had talked about in previous videos. So in the next video, we're going to kind of um, recap some of this stuff, and we're going to look at the, an another way of interpreting this, which is called the Nertz equation.